Thank you for joining us for our reflection on a lesson from the Daily Office Lectionary. My name is Father Tom Papazoglakis, and I serve as rector at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. Today is Tuesday in the third week in Lent. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our lesson is from the book of Genesis, the 45th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried out, Send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it and the household of Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth, and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now... Your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father now how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. While Benjamin wept upon his neck, and he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them, and after that his brothers talked with him. Here ends the lesson. Now it was Joseph's turn to react. He could no longer hold back his emotions and joy at seeing his brothers, especially his younger brother Benjamin. This encounter so moved him that he broke down and wept. His cry was in fact so loud that the Egyptians and even the household of Pharaoh heard it. His first words were, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? He can imagine the shock and apprehension his brothers must have felt when he called them to come closer. Under the cloud of guilt of their past misdeed, which they had now carried for some 25 years, they must have been wondering if Joseph was going to seek his revenge as he now held all the power. Joseph knew what his brothers had done selling him into slavery. But instead of what they feared might have been, this mighty official, speaking now in their own language, broke into tears to inquire about their dad's health. Now, you must understand, his use of the Hebrew, Abi, literally means my father. But in biblical Hebrew, and in the context of this quote, would more appropriately be translated as the more personal and familial term, dad, as these brothers spoke of their parent. Joseph quickly dismissed his brother's fears explaining how God has used what the brothers intended for harm, 
God intended for good. Joseph had come to understand that God intended to create a safe haven for the chosen family of Abraham to survive a severe famine and multiply. Instead of reacting with anger or vengeance, Joseph responded by sending an invitation to his father to come to Egypt as quickly as possible. Joseph's message begins and ends urging the need to hurry. Today's reading ends with hugs and tears as the joy of reuniting with a long-lost brother, freed of the burden of guilt the brothers had carried for so long, in a very real sense, now set all free from their various forms of bondage and slavery. Just as we see in the life of Joseph, God still takes that which is intended for evil and uses it for our good and His glory. Let us pray. Almighty God, You alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant that your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Join us every weekday for our reflection. If you live in the Clifton Park area, join us for worship at 4.30 on Saturdays or 8 or 9.30 on Sunday mornings. If you're unable to join us in person, join us virtually through our YouTube channel. Our webpage provides recordings and details about all of our offerings. Mm -hmm.